How can transitioning as a teenager affect one's social life, environment at home, and mental health? Hello, my name is Rebecca Peacock, and my presentation is based around transgender youth. To give some background, transgender is when you identify as anything other than your birth sex. Usually, sex is attributed to what you were born as, and gender is what you identify as. Um, Non-binary non is under the transgender umbrella because you technically don't identify as your birth sex, therefore making it uh, technically transgender. These are two actors, or actor and actress. The first is Elliot Page. He's a Canadian actor who has been in two X-Men movies and is known for the Umbrella Academy. He came out on December first, 2020, and has since had top surgery for his gender reassignment. Um, top surgery is very common because it is the cheapest surgery out of the two. You have top surgery and bottom surgery. Uh, top surgery is actually covered by some medical insurances, which is very appreciative, because otherwise it would be $10,000. Um, the other actress is Lavern Cox. She's a, like I said, an actress, she's American, and she has starred in Orange is the New Black, and was the first transgender actress to win a daytime Emmy. It's okay for teens to be transgender. Personally, I believe that yes, it is very much okay, because starting out when you're a teenager helps you transition easier. Because when you start hormones such as testosterone or estrogen, you relive puberty. It is basically, you go through puberty, puberty a second time and have all the feelings once again, but this time differently. Um, it also helps with like, self-worth issues and mental health issues because instead of like, holding on to it and thinking, oh, I'll never be who I want to be, you can actually go ahead and get that done and start feeling like you belong in your body. Uh, some of these social effects, uh, positive, are you have better relationships with the people around you because you're not afraid to be who you are around them because you know you can trust them if you're out. Uh, your mental health also improves because you're not keeping that big secret from everyone around you. It allows you to know whether or not your friends are really your friends because people react negatively. That's no surprise. And you'll face people who will shame you and want to hurt you. And you have to deal with that. You have to recognize that there's something going on with them and they're not going to accept you. And that's OK. Sure, they were your friend, but you can move on because there are people around you that care for you. Um, it also helps you feel more comfortable such confident in your body because, like I said before, you are who you want to be. You don't, you're not afraid of just like, not being like being a female, you're no, you're no longer a female, you identify as male, you're not afraid to be male, you're not afraid to tell people that you are, and it makes you feel comfortable and confident with yourself, and you're not afraid. Uh, this is a comic I found, or more so, I guess, a picture, and it uh, displays dead naming, which is the transgender person's legal name. Um, usually it's called dead naming because that isn't their name anymore. And usually it is very offensive and could count as a slur to use it when they have told you blatantly that that is not their name. Um, uh, it usually results in a lot of bullying. Bullies will take advantage of the fact that they know their dead name and use it against them to hurt them. Dead naming when you don't know is completely okay because, to be fair, you don't know. You're not meaning to hurt that person. Um, uh, the namesake, I included that because it talks about how the main character wants to change his name. And it is mentioned that many people change their name for different reasons, and it is a very long legal process, but it is okay in America because. There's no reason for you to, to struggle with a name you don't want. 
the negative effects of, of being out socially is bullying, as I've mentioned. It is a very, very large social effect, and it can make or break a teenager. Because if they're constantly facing bullying about their gender identity, and every day they go into school thinking, oh, maybe today will be better, and only to be shot down, constantly misgendered, dead named, it hurts them. And they, eventually, they cave into either self-harm or even suicide. Um, friends leaving, like I mentioned before, with finding out who your real friends are, friends go and leave in your lifetime, and it's something that you have to adjust to. And if your friend leaves you because you're transgender, or gender non-conforming, were they really your friend in the first place? Um, you will also be ostracized, which applies to bullying, uh, where people will shame you publicly, and you have to deal with that because you have to be stronger than them if you want to be who you are. I uh, use the de developmental cognitive neuroscience to apply to these social effects because of the way that peer pressure applies. If you're afraid of coming out because of how people are going to react, they're, you're being peer pressured into hiding, and you can't be out, you can't be who you are. Um, home life, positive, the positive effects are your mental health improves. That usually applies with all positives because you feel safer, you feel like you have a safe space. Uh, transitioning can start with parent approval. It is a very long process because you do need to see a psychiatrist for at least a couple, like a month or two to be approved to start taking the hormones. But at least it can start while you're a teenager. Uh, relief. Parents will know your secret and you won't have to tiptoe around them and be afraid of their reaction. And you have less anxiety for that exact reason. You're not afraid to be out to them. Um, the negative effects are more brutal. Home is no longer a safe space. You can't feel safe in your own home because you don't know how your parents are going to treat you. Um, usually if you are out in your home, you face severe abuse, physical and verbal, uh, because of the mindset that you can that parents have sometimes where they can beat it out of you. That does not work, it has never worked. All it does is make children hide from their parents and not tell them anything. Uh, that applies with the fear of parents because you can't trust them anymore. They've lost your trust and respect. Your anxiety worsens because now you're having to tiptoe even more than before and you have the possibility of depression because you can't change anything about your life. You're stuck. And the mental health issues that transgender youth face are usually depression, anxiety, su suicidal thoughts and self-harm, and gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is not technically a mental illness, but I wanted to include it because it is a feeling of uncomfortableness, such so discomfort in your own body from being your birth sex. That's why most transgender people change because it feels wrong to be like female or male and there are some transgender people who don't have dysphoria it does not make them any less it's just some people have different experiences some of the, oh this is a picture of how it kind of feels where you feel like you're being torn in two because like biologically you are female and you feel like you you have the hormones there and you have the motherly senses, but in actuality you feel like a guy. You want to dress like a guy and you want to be a guy, and they fight each other. Um, solutions. Some solutions are be more accepting. It doesn't take a lot to just use the correct pronouns or use the preferred name. Many people, like some girls, like their name is Samantha, they go by Sam, and that's no issue for some people. But the second a transgender person does, it becomes a bigger issue for no reason. Uh, you can offer more health and acceptance, acceptance to transgender youth, uh, provided more programs specifically for them so they feel that they have a safe place wherever they are. And don't allow the bullying to continue. Protect them in public places such as school by putting a stop to that and educating people on tra being transgender. 
Some of the limitations are that safe spaces will be targeted. They have always been. That's a common thing. Not all states will willingly help out transgender children because Texas is a very good example of that. They currently have a, they're trying to get a law passed that will make accepting your transgender children count as child abuse. And there's no reason for that to exist. Florida has something similar going on with the don't say gay bill, where young children cannot be taught anything about gender identity or sexual orientation. And that's not fair. Being, transgen being transgender or gay is a, it's just life. You, you don't see people throwing up, like making a fuss about gay animals or animals that don't exactly align with their gender. So why should it be different for humans? Um, slurs and offensive language will still be used, and dead naming as well. That's to be expected because we still we still have people who are racist doing the same thing. It's hard to make people change, and equality is difficult to achieve. And religious views create that difficulty because religion will tell people what to believe, and they will thoroughly believe that, and that prevents them from seeing how people are and how, like, it's not bad to be transgender or gay. Uh, in, the, in conclusion, uh, transgender youth face many challenges and far too much abuse. The least everyone can do is teach themselves about transgender youth and how to not be hateful or ignorant. A child deserves to grow up at who, as who they want to be and not by what you want them to be or what their parents want them to be. It is their option, it is their body. Uh, societal pressure creates so many mental issues for youth, and that's not fair to them. We need to recognize our mistakes and improve. All right. All right, let's do a couple of the questions here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Um, what evidence did you gather that you did not include, and then why did you choose not to include it? Uh, I didn't go as far into the mental health aspects as I should have, or the gender reassignment surgeries that are possible. Uh, I just felt like they didn't fit with the theme of my presentation as well as I would have wanted them to. Okay. And your second question, how did you use the conclusions or the questions of others to advance your own research? Are you, um, can you ask it again? Sure, no problem. How did you use the conclusions or the questions of others to advance your own research? Uh, I went, I used the question of others and my conclusion go in thinking this is someone who knows nothing about it and through knowing nothing about it, I tried to figure out the biggest issues that are more commonly known to touch on so it would be more easy to understand. Okay. Thank you very much.